The good and bad news about West Coast radiation there is no doubt that the radiation levels we've encountered during our tour of the West Coast should be of concern to everyone. The equipment we're using is designed to detect particles of ionizing radiation. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, any living tissue in the human body can be damaged by ionizing radiation in a unique manner. BCRAD 2 the body attempts to repair the damage, but sometimes the damage is of a nature that cannot be repaired, or it is too severe or widespread to be repaired. The EPA's FAQ page on the health effects of radiation states. The agency also admits that ionizing radiation causes cancer and can spur genetic mutations, which can be passed on to offspring. This is bad news. Normal background radiation levels should typically hover below or around 30 counts per minute. It is concerning that up and down the West Coast, nearly every place monitored tested well above this level, the highest concentration of course being found at Surfers Beach in Half Moon Bay, California and further south. The readings below document locations investigated from Half Moon Bay up to Portland, Oregon, Half Moon Bay Surfers Beach, California, 374 CPM Golden Gate Bridge Southside, 50 CPM Crescent City, California, 54 CPM Eugene, Oregon University of Oregon Campus, 58 CPM Charleston, Oregon, 54 CPM Portland, Oregon Columbia River, 76 CPM We also found that the California coastline south of Half Moon Bay had increased radiation levels three times higher than what is considered to be normal, with a reading of 112 CPM taken at Salinas River State Beach. Also bad news is the fact that residents are almost completely oblivious to the threatening dangers surrounding them, in part due to media brainwashing and the downplaying of the significance of the fallout from the Fukushima nuclear disaster. As far as we can tell, InfoWars is the only media organization taking the initiative to conduct readings and report the actual facts. Additionally, there is the matter of bioaccumulation to worry about. As the beaches and local communities continue being showered with high radiation, the real issue is that bioaccumulation is occurring in sea life, meaning that radiation is building up and accumulating in the foods many people eat. However, there is also some good news to report. The extremely high level of radiation encountered at Surfers Beach does not appear to be widespread throughout the coast, according to our measurements. Also, fish we tested at local markets showed only slightly elevated levels of radiation, meaning the people eating it are likely not ingesting high levels. See the readings below, Eureka, Ka, Ahituna, 40 CPM Beaverton, Oregon, Columbia River King Salmon Filet, 31 CPM Beaverton, Oregon, Sashimi Hamashi Raw Yellowtail imported from Japan, 18 CPM Beaverton, Oregon, Uni Sea Urchin, 34 CPM Beaverton, Oregon, Raw Sashimi from Atlantic Ocean Canada, 40 CPM However there were still fish that tested higher. For instance a wild taco imported from Japan gave a reading of 44 CPM in addition to an albacore tuna, imported from Canada, which also read 44 CPM. Two small croakers caught off of Hartford Pier in Avila Bay, California right near the Diablo Canyon power plant read in at 60 CPM, nearly twice the normal radiation level for the region. Two small croakers caught off of Hartford Pier in Avila Bay, California right near the Diablo Canyon power plant read in at 60 CPM, nearly twice the normal radiation level for the region. In Crescent City, California, fresh crabs measured at 56 CPM, and two small croakers a man caught off the Hartford Pier in Avila Bay, near the Diablo Canyon nuclear facility, scanned in at 60 CPM, double the standard 30 CPM for the Half Moon Bay area. Fresh crab purchased in Crescent City. California read in at 56 CPM, higher than normal levels for the region. Fresh crab purchased in Crescent City, California read in at 56 CPM, higher than normal levels for the region. We were unable, however, to test what is believed to be one of the most highly radiated fish in the ocean, the bluefin tuna. One fish market owner in Eureka, 
California told us that he specifically doesn't carry that type of fish due to public concerns about radiation. It is also no exaggeration that ambient radiation readings taken at almost every location climbed into the 70s, a startling indicator that the ionizing radiation is unknowingly and constantly bombarding the people of California. In reality, there is no real good news about the radiation levels we're finding. As documented, very few places and foods are giving low readings. We encourage everyone to independently research the unusual levels of radiation, which the federal government and even academic officialdom say is perfectly safe. As the EPA admits on their own site, there is no firm basis for setting a safe level of exposure above background levels.